Hi everyone, and welcome to Adventures in iSTEM Technology Tuesday. Today, we are going to go over how to use Google Forms to gather important student information. When you log into your Google Drive, the first thing you'll want to do is go to New, go to More, and here you see Google Forms, and you'll want to click on that. When I flip my class, the first thing I want to do is get information about technology in my students' lives. So here I'm going to title my form, and I'm going to title it Technology Survey. I am going to require, for me and our district, uh, all the students have a login, so I am going to require them to present their login. And then I'm going to add some questions. And the first question I always want to know is, first of all, what is their name? Now, Google Forms defaults with multiple choice. So you will want to change that to text. And this is going to be a required question. Then I'm going to add a new item, another text, and I want another last name. You could put this together, but I like to separate it. From here, I like to know their class period. If you have one class, you don't need this. But if you don't, um, what I like to do is do a choose from a list. And I put period number. Or you could put class number. And here's where I'm going to give them the options. And even though I do give them the options, there's always at least one or two students that will claim they are in period two, even though they are in period four. It always happens. And if that does happen, you can go in by hand on the response sheet and then change that by hand. And again, you will want to make this a required question. And those are usually the first three things I always have on all my Google Forms. Their first name, their last name, and their period number. Now from here, I want to know information about their technology use at home. So I'm going to have them uh, do a choose from list also. And actually, I'm going to have uh, check boxes because in check boxes, they can choose all that apply to them. So I'm going to choose check boxes. And my question is Do you have any of these devices at home? And I want them to check all that apply. I'm just curious as to what they actually have in their house. So do they have a computer? Do they have a laptop? Do they have a tablet? Do they have a smartphone? Most of my students would have smartphones. Uh, do they have um, an iPod Touch? Do they have a video game console? And then I like to actually put, in case I missed anything else, um, an at other spot in case they have some other way they have technology at home. And again, this is a required question. Uh, so since it is going to be a required question, I also like to put um, another option of no technology at home. Now, again, I understand they probably have a TV, but we're talking about technology to get onto the internet. And again, it's a required question. Then for my students, I need to know if they have internet at home, which um, if they're going to be watching videos, they do need internet at home. Our school does provide uh, technology for them to use in class before, or actually at school before, after school, and at lunchtime. Um, but I do need to know what do they have at home. So for me, again, uh, they're going to choose from a list on this time because I only want one answer. So when you want them to have multiple answers, it's a checkbox. If you want one answer only, you can either do it as a multiple choice or you can have them do it as a choose from a list. And my question to them is, uh, do you have internet at home? And now this is not a simple yes or no answer. Uh, last year I just had them say, do you have internet at home? 
And I had a lot that said yes, but then later on learned that their internet was not very good or it would come and go um, or it wasn't strong enough. So my questions are usually yes now. Um, it works great all the time. Or yes, but it's not reliable. Or yes, um, it works all the time, but it's low. Which means that a video, they might have trouble getting on with the videos. And then, no, I do not have internet at home. And again, that's a required question. All the questions that I really want to gain information on, I make sure that I hit required question on. And then I'm always curious as to um, how long they've been using computers. Um, that has changed as I've been doing more and more with this, as schools are now getting more into technology in their schools. Um, the answer has changed. But I am curious as to this one, so I leave it as a... Um, a text question because it is open-ended and my question to them is um, since what grade have you been using computers and again it's either at home or at school I want to know, are, have they been using computers at home or at school since kindergarten, which means that they've had about seven or eight years of this, or is it only in the last year? Like, this gives me a better idea of how, how comfortable they are with computers. Uh, the next question is, um, I want to know um, what device, if they had to do a technology assignment, um, in my school, again, it's having technology, so if they have to do a technology assignment, assignment uh, what device are they most likely to use? And, and again, I also clarify either at home or at school. So if you're at school or at home, what device are you going to be using? And since it is a one question, one I want one answer, um, the most device, I'm going to have again choose as a list. So I'm going to clarify either at home or after school. Actually, I should say, or at school, which device do you use most often to complete assignments that require technology? And I'll give them the option of a computer, uh, a laptop, a tablet, a smartphone. You would be amazed at how many students actually will write a whole entire essay using their smartphone and just with their thumbs texting it. And then I'm going to put in other. or I'm going to put actually for this one uh, um, a different format. And again, that will be a required question. All right, so now that we have this, I want to know um, how often they use a computer or a tablet or smartphone um, to complete different tasks, like playing games and stuff like that. So with this one, I actually need to make um, a grid and uh, for this one, um, it says require one response per row. So I actually do want one response per row. And then you make your rows, like play games, do schoolwork, produce multiple projects. And uh, for the columns, never, once or twice a year, monthly, and so on. Um, after that, the last thing I really want to know about technology is um, I want to know how good they are. 
So my question always is, uh, when using each of the following software programs, check the statement that most accurately describes how much help you need. So I want to know how good are they at games, at Word documents, presentations, and so on. Um, I want to know who are my experts, who are good, uh, who rarely need help, who sometimes do, and then who always needs help. So who are the ones that um, I might have to pair them up with someone who really knows what they're doing. So that's things to know. Uh, at the end, just because I already have them filling out a survey for me, I always want to know information about them. So some basic information I would want to know is um, what is some information about you I should know so I can help you this year. And this is when my students uh, tell me, oh, I get distracted very easily, or I need to sit in the front, or there's someone in this class who I really can't sit next to because we have we butt heads all the time. So that's a great one to have. Um, and then just for fun, I always like to, to ask them, you know, what is something unique about yourself? Um, which it's sad when some people say there's something unique about me. And I tell them there's, there's something unique about always. And I always start off with something about me. And I say, you know, I have four sisters and no brothers. What is something unique about you? You know, and I tell them, you know, just tell me anything. It's fine. Um, and so once you're done, uh, the last thing you're going to do is you can change the theme here. Uh, right now, it's just a basic, old, boring theme here. Um, if you go over to the change theme, you can choose from all these different templates. Since I do teach science, it's always fun to have a science lab one. Um, and you can customize it if you want to. And the last thing you're going to do is you're going to hit send form. Now, to make it easier, I always shorten the URL, and then I'll copy this. And then, for me, I use Schoology all the time, and by now, they've already been on Schoology. I've already got them on my class site because it's easier to give them a four-letter code than it is to give them this form. And so I just post this as a link, and they click on this, and then they fill the form out for me. And that's where I gather all their information. And once you get, the, get that information, you will now have their email addresses. You will have their class period, so you can use Doctopus. You will have a whole bunch of information about each class period that you can then use in your class. So I hope you found this useful, and uh, remember to go ahead and, um, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my channel, or join me at adventuresinstemblogspot.com. Thank you.